tool for this. So what I'll do is just uh, select that building. Let's create a few so we can click on them. So the first thing that we need to do is that if you want to basically interact with anything or have it collidable or anything like that, then you need to select the object and add a component. And what this means is that you can add a, if we just click the little cross there, you want a, basically a collider. The simplest method is a box collider. And that'll basically create a, a very simple unit box, and then you can adjust the size of that. And position. So sometimes that'll work. Uh, that's the, the kind of lowest computer intensive method. Um, you can also add a mesh collider. So uh, mesh collider here. And what that lets you do is actually select the mesh that you created inside of Rhino. Um, it's a bit difficult when your object is made up for a few, for a few meshes. But let's see. So if we said that the sphere here was what we we're going to click on. What that does is make the actual this particular part of that component clickable. Um, with this simple object, that was quite easy to do, but when you've got thousands of meshes that have kind of came in from Rhino, it can be a little bit difficult. Um, but you could create a mesh in Rhino if you wanted to, that was specifically for clicking. So you could kind of create another mesh like that. Um, give it a name, so call it like Collider. So you can find it when you go back into Unity and then export that with your object. So to actually make this uh, interactive, what we need is a bit of code. So if we go to our code folder here, right click, create, and then C sharp script. Then it's quite important that you name it properly at this stage because that actually names the stuff inside the file. So we'll call it uh, click manager. And make sure you give it a capital C and a capital M because that's quite important for the, um, the naming conventions. And then to open that, if you just double click that, that'll open whatever edit editor you've got set up basically. I'd recommend using uh, VS Code, which is what I've got set up, just because it's quite simple. Um, but I think Unity possibly comes with, it used to come with something called Mono Develop, but either's fine. Really. So any new script that you make in Unity will have this basic, basic simple outline. What you've got is the, the class, which is the click manager, which is just what we created, in, inherits from a Mono behavior, which just means that it has all the stuff that uh, Unity needs. Uh, and it's got two basic methods, uh, start and update. So relatively self-explanatory, gives you a nice bit of help here. But anything in start will just cut be called when that object um, is initialized. So it's not necessarily the start of the game, but it's when that object is initialized. Um, anything in update basically calls every frame. So the first thing we're going to do is to listen out for any clicks that we do in the game. What we need is a, well, well the first thing we need to do is we need to know if the user has clicked in your in your scene. So uh, check if mouse. So quite simple, if, and then there's a, uh, class in Unity that you can kind of access from anywhere called input. 
uh, and that has a, a method called get mouse button down. Uh, and then you just need to put the ID of the mouse click. So if we say zero, then it's uh, right click or uh, left click, sorry. So I think a few of you have used Python before, or uh, at least you should have done. Uh, um, is, it's got a few extra little things in there, so it uses their curly brackets, whereas Python just uses spacing. Um, should be easy to get used to, um, but most, most things are fairly similar, at least at the basic level. Um, so what we're going to do is that when the user clicks this button, we're going to use a debugger to basically log that uh, mouse button was clicked. Uh, another thing in C sharp is that you have to end every uh, every line with a semicolon. And then we're just going to save that file. So if you drop back into Unity, it'll basically build all your scripts. And you can see a little preview here where you select it. And what we want to do is, um, it doesn't really matter where this goes in the scene, um, as long as it's kind of initialized all the time. So we're just going to drag this onto our camera because we know that our camera will all, always be live, basically. And what, what I've just done there, in case you missed it, is just drag straight from the asset browser onto the object. And you'll see that um, in our list of components here, now we've got the click manager script. So to check that's working, what we're going to do is go to this uh, second tab here called console. Go into the play mode. And then if you click anywhere, you'll see that it basically logs what we uh, what we asked it to log. So the next thing we need to do is um, uh, check if we have actually clicked on something. And to do that, we use a thing called a array, which in Unity basically means that you cast uh, a line from the camera to into the scene where you've clicked. What we need is a array. So whenever you, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see if this works. Um, whenever you create a, a new variable in C sharp, you have to say basically what type it is and then give it a name. And that rear we're going to say is equal to the main main camera. Uh, sorry, I've forgotten Mr. Step. Before we do this, we need to define which uh, which object is our camera. So any properties that you want in this um, in this component, we just drop at the top, and I'll show you what that means in a second. So if you just add a public camera object making sure to use the capital C called uh, main camera. If we then go back into Unity, anything you've added in there that was public, if we go to our RTS camera, you can now see that that is a, a, it's an object that we can select inside our click manager. So what we'll do is just click on the little dot and I'll just show our RTS camera, double click, and that will assign that to that. Another thing that we need is the, um, we just need to store the thing that we've hit. So we're going to create another private um, variable called a raycast hit. Uh, 
by making it private, it basically means we can access it in here, but we can't access it in here. So what we need to do is this rate now needs to equal the main camera, which we can select. That has now got a method called the uh, screen point to rear. And we need to give it the input dot mouse position. And that basically says that we are we're getting this main camera that we've we've uh, assigned. Um, it's got this helper function basically that says turn that screen point that we've clicked on into a rear. It'll cast straight into the scene, and that get turned returns this rear object. So then we need to say um, we need to use that rear and say has that rear hit anything basically. So what we're going to do is if uh, physics, which is another uh, useful uh, class, physics dot rear cast. So that means we're casting the rear, and then we're going to give it the rear. And then what we'd like is to get a rear cast it hit out. So what that's basically doing is it's taking that rear that we've created, uh, casting it using the physics engine, and assigning whatever it hits to this rear cast uh, object here that we've created. So if that actually hits something, again, what we can do is uh, log that. And then we go back into here. So at the moment, our ground is, in fact, we'll, we'll just turn off the ground a second so you can see what's going on. So you'll see if we click now that it doesn't actually, uh, it doesn't select anything. Because, uh, so it doesn't uh, say we've clicked on anything. We just need to lock the buildings. Weird. Um, but now if we click on a building, it'll say you click something. Time. Okay. So now what we've got is a raycast uh, hit object, which is storing the information of the object that we've hit. So we can say um, if So we can access some information on there. So the collider is the any object that's hit by Raycast has to have the collider. So we can access the collider component. And that is basically this uh, uh, this collider object here. Once we've accessed that, we can access the game object, which is just the whole object, so you can get all the components. Uh, and then we can get this uh, just simple property called a name, which is just whatever we've named the object. So what we'll do is we'll name this uh, this building here. Uh, let's call that um, building. And what we'll do, we'll say what we'll do is we'll say if that object that we've hit, if the name of that object equals building. Then we just want to debug dot the building. So I was dropping off behind the plane. Oops. So you'll see that if we clicked it. Anywhere else, it just says you click something. If we click on this one here, 
then you can see that it says you click the building. So what I'm going to do is just comment out these other ones right now, so it's not getting so messy. Um, to comment out, you just use these as four slashes. So it's not very flexible to say that everything has to be called a building um, if you want to click on it. So what we're going to do is create another class called a clickable building. So if you go back to project, go back to your code, uh, right click, create C sharp script called clickable building. Remembering the name naming conventions, capital C, capital uh, B. And for this to start with, we're going to keep it quite simple. So if you just get rid of all this extra stuff uh, and just give it two public um, properties. The first one is uh, a string called name and a public called, uh, public int called age. So a string is just, a, as it says, a string. It's um, like a word. Uh, ints are single digit numbers. They don't have a point. And um, we could create another one called uh, one here. Uh, right. and what that basically does is it, it allows us to assign some metadata to the object. If we go back to Unity, we'll select this uh, this building first. Um, another way that you can add a component, so you can either drag that onto the properties or onto the actual object. Um, another way is to basically click on add component and then we'll just search for a clickable building. Now that in. And what that does is let us add a few, um, just the better data that we discussed before. So uh, let's call it building A. Give it some information. So back on our click manager, um, instead of actually searching and seeing if it's if the name is what um, what we've clicked on, we need to know if the, if what we've clicked on has the clickable building class assigned. And if it is. If it has that class, then we want to assign it to, it, to another variable so that we can start uh, inspecting that to those properties. So what we're going to do is um, want a new object that is a clickable building. Call that building. Um, and make that equal to, so we've got our raycast object, uh, our raycast hit. We want to access the uh, transform. Which is just a it's just a, a kind of method of accessing the other um, information on the object, just like using Collider. Um, it's got other properties, but this that's all we use it for for now. Uh, and then game object, uh, and then from that we're going to use a, a helper a helper method called get component. And the, what to kind of give it the uh, target component, what we need to say is a uh, type of. Uh, brackets clickable building. Uh, and there's a funny another funny thing that it doesn't know that you want to tell you have to tell get component what type is coming out. So you just say it as a clickable building. So what we've done is we've taken the raycast hit, um, we've accessed the, the kind of game object of that hit. We've called this get component method, asked it to find something that is the type of clickable building, and then told it to set it as a clickable building. Um, but what will happen is that 
at this point, we don't know if that building is actual, actually a click of a building or if it's something else. So if it's something else, it will return a, it'll return as null, basically. So what we want to do is we want to say if a building does not equal null, um, we'll do another debug.log. So what we'll get now is uh, we've turned off those other debugs. We don't get anything unless you click a building. You'll see there. So we've clicked on this one, um, and this says you clicked on a building because that particular object has the clickable building uh, component assigned to it. So we could assign it to these ones as well. And then clicking any of these buildings will, uh, or any that we've assigned a collider to. Here. So that's working. So the next thing we want to do is actually access some of this uh, metadata that we've assigned. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our um, click, click manager script. So now that we've got this building object here, we can assign anything that is in here in this uh, clickable building class. So what we'll do is uh, a nice little trick when you're uh, logging is if you put a dollar sign at the start of this um, string, you can then add some variables inside there. And the way you do that is uh, let's say uh, you click the clicker building called and then open curly brackets, close curly brackets, and inside there put the building dot name. And with age, it's so nicely we get uh, you click the little building called building A, and then this one's building B, and this gives you the age. So we've got all the information there that we need. So we're going to just make this a little bit tidier and pull this out as a separate uh, separate method. So if you create a, what we want is another function that basically uh, takes the input and returns this building if it's if we clicked on it. So any any functions or methods inside of uh, C sharp, you have to say what the return type is. So we're going to say it's a click of a building. Uh, we're going to call it uh, get clicked on building. We don't need to have any arguments. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll copy everything inside it.
Uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you. Great, all right, sorry about that. Uh, share screen. All right, where are we? All right, so what I'm gonna do is um, basically copy everything inside of this uh, if statement into the new function we created. So what we'll do is get all of that. Oh. Into there. And then what we want to do is say that if we have um, if we have clicked on something, uh, we want to assign it to a clickable building. Using this get clicked on building uh, function that we created. So it just creates this. Um, you, you want to kind of keep it quite tidy in here, otherwise, it will just be a nightmare to keep track of. Uh, and then we could just use this. Um, uh, building is not null, then we are going to do something in here. So if building is not equal to null, then return the building. Um, if we've not hit anything or it's not building, then we're just going to return null as default. Yeah, that's still working. So what we want to do is basically every time we click on a building, um, we want to be able to show it in the scene somehow. So what we'll do is we'll basically create a little pop-up. Uh, so we're going to create an empty object and we'll call it pop-up. Uh, and on that empty object, we'll create a 3D object, 3D text. And if you just rotate that so that, um, I'm just gonna actually drag that over so it's not down. If you rotate that so it's basically facing the camera like that. Uh, and we'll just create a couple of lines. So let's go to the second line there. So we've got a very basic problem. We need to link that basic to whatever building we picked on at the time. So we're going to create another bit of uh, script. So create a C sharp script called uh, pop up manager. And just open that up. We need to know a few uh, a few properties basically for that pop up manager. So the first one is. Um, the height above the uh, ground. Uh, we need to link in the um, the text objects that we put in there. So we created a few text objects. We need to just drop those in there. Um, and we're actually we're actually define that as a list. And so if you does that, if you define a list in C sharp, uh, you just put these square brackets after the after the list. Sorry, after the type name. Uh, and we'll call that text objects. We don't need to do anything in any of these either, so we'll get rid of those. So 
the the pump is going to need to do two things. It's going to need to jump to the building that we've clicked on. And it's also going to need to display the information. So we're going to create two placeholder uh, functions on here called uh, public void move move to location. And then another one called uh, void set to text. So what we want to do is basically when we've clicked on an actual building, um, we need to give it the location that it needs to jump to and give it the text that it needs to show. So we'll create another little uh, helper method here called uh, void um, update pop up. So what we'll do is we'll say that when we've clicked on this building, we just want to update the pop up. So it's not going to do anything at the moment. Um, we need some stuff in here, um, and the update pop up is also going to need to know this the information of the building. So what we'll do is we'll get this building, pass it to update pop up. Put that in the argument as a clickable building. And then just to check if it's working, we're just going to put this uh, debug log in there. So let's see. Um, So I've clicked on a building, it's given us some information on the building we've clicked on, and then it's updating the pop-up. So it all seems to be working. So what we want to do is um, basically find the pop-up object. Uh, so it's quite important that we only have one pop-up using this particular method. Um, but we're going to do a, we're going to say, oops, We have to define a pop-up manager called pop-up. To get that, we're going to use this helper uh, helper function that Unity supplies called uh, find object of type. Um, and another way that you can tell something about the class that it's trying to find uh, is with these angle brackets. Um, so sometimes you need to use these. I think. It just takes a bit of, uh, you can either dig into what how they work or just kind of get used to when you'll need them. But in this particular function, it needs to be in uh, angle brackets. So find object of type, and we're going to say it's looking for a pop-up manager. And what that'll do is it'll find the first object in our scene that has got the, um, the component pop-up manager on it. Uh, then what we want to do is we've uh, we've given um, this pop up to uh, two methods. So the first one was uh, move to location. One was uh, set text. So what that will do is it will call these two methods on that particular pop up. Um, the move to a location needs to know the location it's moving to. What we can do quite Nicely is so that um, it's provided with the transform information of the building we've clicked on. So if we just do building and transform, uh, I'll show you how that works. But that's basically sending. Um, sorry, so each of the building has the transform component. It's just sending that information to the pop up. And then the text is um, the simplest. Way. What we're going to do is, we, because we've got multiple lines, we'll send a, basically a list of text objects, a list of string objects. So to do that, we need to create a new list. Uh, to do, sorry, to do that, you need to do new and then string. 
Uh, and so, because we're defining a list, we do the, the square brackets afterwards. Angle brackets, uh, so curly brackets. Uh, and then inside there, we will do um, two strings. So uh, name is And uh, age. Can you give it, you give it um, two lines of text, the building name and the building age? That means we're giving, every, giving the, giving the pop-up everything it needs to move to the location for the transform and the text that it needs to display. So all that's left is to basically um, fill out these two methods so that it's doing what we wanted to do. So we've given the move to location a transform component um, as an argument. Which is, uh, so we've given it the build and transform. And the build and transform is a, uh, it's a transform type. We're going to call it transform. And uh, just to see what's going on, do another debug.log. And say we are moving, moving the pop-up to, and then we can say, uh, let's see. So each transform component has uh, three, three properties, the position, the rotation, and the scale. So we're gonna say moving pop-up to transform.position. And then the set text we've we've sent it a uh, a list of strings so uh, text lines uh, and we can just double check that that's working so if we go back to uh, play mode. And that pop manager. So we've created the pop manager script. Um, let's just drag it onto our pop up. That work. So the other thing that we said is we, we need to link the text objects that we've created. Um, so this first property is a text object list. So we'll just add two, two um, entities to that and then drag these onto there. There we go. So we're updating the pop up and moving the pop up to this location. It's a different location for each building. So to move it is quite simple. Um, we basically need to access the, uh, I'm just going to rename that target. So it's not So what we need to do is set the transform. 
So we're currently accessing, accessing the transform of the pop-up manager and say position. We want that to be equal to a new vector. And a vector is just a, a point, basically, a point in space. Uh, we want a three, uh, three axis vector. And the X position is going to be the target target position dot x. The y position is the um, this height above the ground because that we don't want it to be positioned based on the height of, of uh, the building because the buildings are all at zero basically. Uh, so we want height above the ground, and then target position dot uh, z. So what you'll see now is that it basically moves around according to where the buildings are. So the next thing we need to do is set the text in those uh, on that pop-up. Um, so we've got given a, a list of text objects. Um, and we've got a list of so we've got a list of our text objects. We've got a list of the lines of text that we want to do. And so what we're going to do is that for each, just do a simple for loop. Uh, and the the kind of um, syntax for this in C sharp is a bit different to Python. Um, but you can kind of pick up that you see on some uh, sort of general C sharp tutorials. Uh, so what you need is uh, int uh, i, which initially equals zero. And we're going to run this until the i is uh, less than the uh, text. Text object length. So we're basically saying that for each text object, and then at each uh, iteration, we are going to add one to i. And this is just a, a way of basically looping through each of these text objects. So then we're going to say if um, if i is less than the text lines dot length. So if we haven't run out of text lines to input into it yet, then what we need to do is uh, take our text mesh mesh object. So that's basically we want the text object that corresponds to the, the one that we're up to, so using this index. We want to say that the text object dot text be equal to the current line that we're up to as well. So text lines. So just to sort of run over that again. So we've basically we've put the um the current mouse button. We've checked to see if that's a building. We've passed that building to the update pop-up. Um, we've then called these two methods move to location with the, the position of that building and set text with some of the better information on that building. So that should have moved it and set the text. There we go. So a very simple pop-up system that basically lets you click on each building. And um, we've not set any information on that one yet. But, uh, and you can move around. You could add other things here. So you can you can kind of customize these as you need to. So you could add like a, a you might want to add a plane in there. Kind of sits behind the text. It's a little bit difficult to line up.
I might just play around with it. Better job of that. Um, but if you wanted to have a plan behind it or some extra information or something like that. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Has anyone got any questions at that point? Because that's kind of the end of the coding, really, for the time being. Um, I've got a question which relates a bit more back to the start. Um, um, so when you when you took your geometry in from Rhino, is yeah. it? Are you grouping it by the material that you're going to apply to it in Unity? Is that like good practice? Is that the way, the best way to bring the geometry in? There's there's multiple ways really. It kind of, um, it depends how you've set up your materials if you've got things nice and neat. Because um, if you if you've assigned your materials in here, and you can do it the way I showed you, where you basically you select the object. And you just need to reassign them. And um, the other way is that if you have exported per material, then you could just select the material. So you'd have your glass objects, your brick objects, your kind of ground objects, and then you just drag the materials on. So it's kind of there's, there's a few ways of doing it depending on how messy your model is, really. Okay. <clears throat> uh, but you also want to, particularly if you've got like a, a big city scene, you'll want to break it up somehow anyway. So that's one way of doing that. Yeah. You will need um, you will need multiple objects for each object you want to click on. Anything else? No. Okay. Uh, so the other thing is that just to basically keep an eye on the uh, keep looking on the um, asset the asset store for things. So one of the other useful ones on there is the it's called the Nature Starter Kit, uh, and there's quite a few different ones on there. But that basically has a few trees in. Uh, Some of these are created in older versions of Unity, so you might get an error that says um, update required uh, because it's just bringing a package. You can say I made a backup, go ahead. Um, if you're bringing in one of your old models, then obviously make sure you do a backup. Uh, so in the nature starter kit, I think it's in nature. Uh, you just got a lot of trees. So they're not that pretty, but they're kind of useful if you're, particularly if you're at like the city scale, you just want a lot of trees. They're quite low poly, so it's quite useful. The other thing that I was going to suggest taking a look at, um, and it's not actually something that I've had a decent play around with yet, but they recently brought out a visual editor. So if you've used Grasshopper in, in Rhino, that should be quite, um, you should recognize it basically. It's called Built. Uh, and obviously it's very similar to how Grasshopper works, but you've got uh, basically the visual coding style. So if you're not happy working with um, directly in the C sharp and you want to kind of try something else, I, mean, I can't really help it because I've not used it before, but this looks like it's quite, um, quite promising really. I think that was pretty much everything from me, unless anyone's got any more kind of things they want me to show them. 